Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. This month, in our look through county government in Sheboygan County, we are uh, going to focus on the Sheriff's Department. And with us today, we have Sheriff Lonnie Koenig. And uh, in our half hour discussion today, we are going to look at the different uh, aspects of, of the Sheriff's Department and uh, the responsibilities of the Sheriff. So Lonnie, maybe we could start out uh, today by just giving us a little background about yourself and when you first became Sheriff. I started at the Sheriff's Department in 1981 as a deputy, and I was the first female deputy that they had hired at the Sheriff's Department. In 1989, I was promoted to detective, and from 91 to 96, I worked in what is now known as the Multi-Jurisdictional Enforcement Group, or the Drug Unit. And then after I got out of that unit, then I continued with my detective work, and in 1998, I ran for sheriff, and I was elected in November of 98 and sworn in in January of 99. So a relatively newcomer to the, to the uh, Sheriff's Department, or as, as far as, as the elected position of Sheriff. Yes, relatively And new. what were some of the reasons that you decided to run for Sheriff? Well, it was an opportunity that I thought I could make some changes, some positive changes for the Sheriff's Department. And it really wasn't like this lifelong ambition that I had had, but uh, I guess really what triggered it was um, during that period of time my father had died and my father had gone through his life always doing what I what I could have done what I should have done and never did that so I never wanted to look back and think boy I could have ran for sheriff and I didn't do it. So you tried it and now you're sheriff. You got it. <laughs> Maybe you could give us uh, just an uh, outline of some of your responsibilities as sheriff, some of your duties as, as sheriff. Well the sheriff's position is a statutory, um, your job duties are statutorily outlined. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting is that the sheriff's position predates the signing of the Magna Carta, which was in 1215, and there's some days I feel like I've been <laughs> sheriff since 1215. <laughs> but it's a constitutional office. And some of my duties are by statute to care for the inmates in our county jail, um, to serve civil papers, to provide bailiffs to our courts. Um, we also have jurisdiction in the boundaries of Lake Michigan, and uh, we also have um, the statutory ability to offer assistance to other um, law enforcement departments and to request that uh, assistance. I can think back in, in my younger days, and I can remember when the sheriff was uh, providing meals for the inmates. You don't, you're not going back there tonight and, and cooking dinner for, for our, a couple hundred inmates, are you? No, but you know, back in those days, it was always the sheriff's wife that cooked, so my husband will probably be and, back there cooking tonight. <laughs> and he knows about this? Yeah. <laughs> How many people do you have employed in the sheriff's department in the different divisions that you have? We have a total of 170 nine employees. I'm sorry, I'll get that wrong. We have 79 sworn officers and then 99 civilian officers, which encompasses, you know, car washers, secretaries, correctional officers, bookkeepers, accountants. <coughs> uh, one of the areas that you have in, in law enforcement in Wayne County is the corrections, and we have our new detention center out mm -hmm. on the, the west side of the city. Um, could you give us a little, a little background as to that development and the status of the detention centers right now? Well, the detention center on, on North 31st or on South 31st Street actually consists of a phase one and phase two. And that was completed in, uh, the whole detention center was completed in 99. And that was a $16.2 million project. Phase one is our Huber and medium security facility and that houses 157 inmates. And then phase two is our maximum security, which is our sentenced inmates, and that has a capacity to hold 129 inmates. Obviously, the need for jail capacity for, for a place to put uh, the inmates has increased over the last few years. Yes, it has. Um, could you just give a little background as to, to the numbers a little bit, if you, if you, can have, if you sure, have those? Sure, sure. Um, and I'd also like to add, we have a downtown facility, and that has a capacity of 99 inmates. However, we currently only house 
females and our capacity for the females is 40 and that's per our staffing agreement with the Department of Corrections. And then we also have a juvenile facility and we just completed a, a remodeling project which now gives us the capacity to hold 28 juveniles. I think what's astounding is how how much our inmate population has changed. In 1991, we our daily average population was 98. As to date, in September, our daily average adult population is 225. And then in uh, 93, we were average was five juveniles, and now its average is 13. So it's been a tremendous, tremendous change in the population. I can remember back uh, before we built phase one and phase two of the detention center, we were housing inmates in other counties because of, of the overflow. We were, we were uh, bulging at the seams yes. in, our, in our original facility. And I'm assuming now that, that we are not doing that anymore because of phase one and two. Has, ha have the tables turned a little bit where now we have the ability to house inmates from other counties? Yes. Um, in 98, we were still boarding out because the detention center wasn't complete. Between the adults and the juveniles, we were, the cost of boarding out was approximately $1.4 million. Now, because we have room, we're boarding from other counties, and to date, we've been able to generate a revenue of approximately 249000 this year, in the year 2000. So we went from spending over $1 million a year to generating revenues, income yes. of, of a quarter, quarter of a million. Mm, yes. Um, <clears throat> how close are we? I know we, we can project how many inmates we have and, and, and where we're going with those numbers, but even with the inmates that we're housing from other counties, we still are not at capacity for, for the facilities that we have right now? No, we're not at capacity. So we have some room yet for, for the next few years as far as, as, I don't want to say growth, but for, for more inmates to be housed? We welcome anybody that wants to stay <laughs> at the county jail. <laughs> for as long as they want yes. to. <laughs> I know it was my uh, first or second week on the job in January of 1999, and, and the sheriff uh, gave me a uh, a tour of the detention center and it is just a tremendous facility. The yes, people working there are, do are doing an outstanding job. You've touched on your roles and responsibilities with the detention center. What about the area of civil process, that division? Now besides civil process, that is a statutory um, requirement of the sheriff. They serve all types of civil and criminal papers. Um, they pick up inmates that are want or persons that are picked up on warrants throughout the state. Um, when someone's sentenced to a state prison system, they transport those individuals to that prison system. And many times these people have to come back for hearings, so they go to pick those people up and bring them back for court. They um, transport inmates because we're our main facility is on the north side and that's attached to the courthouse. They transport the inmates from the south side to the, the courts. Um, they also fill in as bailiffs, they do um, sheriff sales, um, they do eviction notices. <laughs> so they just have a, a multitude of responsibilities and there's really only, there's only four people that work that division so they are very, very busy all the time. So you mentioned 178 employees total in the department, four working in that particular yes. area. I'll be yes. darned. Now you also oversee the patrol mm -hmm. division as well as um, uh, looking into criminal investigations. Yes. Could you touch on that a little bit? Well, our patrol division consists of, there's supervisors, but just patrol people, there's 37 patrol officers, and there's six corporals, and, and the corporals are road supervisors, and they're also field training officers. And we're in a period of time now at the Sheriff's Department where we're, we're going through a tremendous hiring process, whether it be in patrol or corrections. Um, the patrol officers, besides issuing citations, which is obviously what they're mostly known for because it's not always a positive experience, but they, um, they write accidents and they are the initial officer at all complaints. 
and then our criminal investigation division that consists of six detectives and uh, an evidence technician and he's really the keeper of all the evidence and our detectives they investigate a variety of crimes um, all deaths whether it be homicide suicide um, and they also do sexual assaults burglaries thefts um, any type of criminal investigation they handle so corrections civil process, a patrol division, criminal investigations, and you also have a number, a number of uh, special teams that work for you in the department. Yes, we have a SWAT team, a dive team, we have boat patrol, we have bicycle patrol, we have all-terrain vehicle, and snowmobile. Well, be darn. Of the, of the special teams, which ones do you see as being most active in the community? Or is it about the same throughout? Well, you know, obviously the snowmobile patrol, that's a seasonal. The all-terrain vehicle, that's basically to get to places that are hard to get to by vehicle. Like, um, I recall not too many years ago where there was a child lost up in Parnell area and they went out to search. Probably our most active um, special teams is our SWAT team and our dive team. And then finally, I know you've been very uh, proactive on community policing. Could you talk about that a little bit? Well, what we have been doing is encouraging our officers to get out and work with the community. Um, when I was a patrol officer, we weren't encouraged to get out and have contact. You were kind of stuck in that car. And now we're telling the officers, get out, stop at the store, stop at the mini marts, meet with the people, and do problem solving together. Um, they attend town hall meetings and village board meetings. Um, we have our officers assigned to a specific area for long term so that they get to know their area and they get to know the people in the area, which once people get to know the officers, they're more apt to come to them when they have problems or whether they have information. And I think one of the greatest examples is Oosburg where they had an issue with um, a barn and, and the kids were in there and they were drinking and, and causing damage. In our department, our officers worked with the village and they were able to condemn that barn and have it torn down. And then we also have, um, we're in our second year of a um, Citizens Academy. And this year is the first year that it's a county-wide Citizens Academy. So Plymouth and Kohler and Sheboygan Falls all send officers who help instruct along with the Sheriff's Department. And it's really an opportunity for the citizens to see what we do at the Sheriff's Department and at other agencies. And they have input, and last night was a session, and last night was going down to the range and, and firing, you know, some weapons. And then we had an inter interactive, um, it's called that, and they're able to have a scenario on the screen and it's, you know, whether you shoot or don't shoot and, and they've really, really enjoyed that. I've received real positive feedback about that. How, how do people get involved if they want to participate that in the future? We do it twice a year and um, they can call the Sheriff's Department and we'll send, we'd be happy to send them an application. Wonderful. Before we move on to uh, one of the larger projects uh, other than the detention center that the Sheriff's Department has been involved in, which is the 800 megahertz communication system. Just a couple of related questions to what Adam was, was asking you. Uh, you mentioned before that you spent several years on a, on a MAG unit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there is concern among the residents of Sheboygan County that, that we not get in, too involved with uh, uh, drug, drugs and, and that type of activity in the county. And, uh, could you just relate to us a little bit about the activities of that unit and, and I realize some of the things you can't talk about because <laughs> otherwise they wouldn't be too effective, mm -hmm. but um, who makes up that unit and, and how does it work? There are two detectives from the Sheriff's Department that are assigned to it and then there is a city officer, a Sheboygan Police Department officer and a lieutenant from the Sheboygan Police Department that oversees that unit. And then from the various departments out in the county, as manpower permits, they will come and assist. Um, back in 91 when I started in the drug unit, you didn't see like heavy volume of drugs. You know, if you went and you did a search warrant and you had a couple ounces of marijuana, you thought, you know, you're doing pretty good. When I left in 96, 
you were seeing multiple pounds of marijuana. And it's, it's how it's changed over the years. On an average, the drug unit gets approximately 50 calls. And unfortunately, they are only able to respond to approximately 30% of those calls immediately. The other, they just aren't because they're so busy with now bigger cases. It doesn't mean that that other percentage never gets looked at. They may be able to use that to um, substantiate some other information. And I think the public sometimes in it, and when I work there, I know, you know, they would call and say, well, I saw somebody smoking on the corner. And you just couldn't get to it. And I, I, there's that frustration on the citizens' part, but they also have to understand that they are a very, very busy unit with very few people. You mentioned the makeup of the unit being from the county and the city. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, the Sheriff's Department has jurisdiction in certain areas of, of Sheboygan yes. County not specifically including the city. How, how does the uh, city police department, the Plymouth, Ocker, Lake Kohler, we have various police departments around the country, how do they interact with the Sheriff's Department? What kind of a relationship do you have with them? You know, I believe that we have a really good relationship with all the departments in the, in the county. And I think part of it's because the chiefs are very cooperative, but I think a, a greater part is the fact that Law enforcement is such an important aspect that it's, if you can't get along with one another, you just can't do your job correctly. So I, I think we're very lucky in this county to have that relationship. And along with that relationship, we have to be able to talk to each other. Yes. Uh, right now we have, we, a, we, we, have, we have a project <laughs> uh, that, that we're in the midst of and it's called the 800 megahertz yes. project. Could you just give us, and, and we don't have a lot of time, I and mean, we could probably spend uh, one or two shows just talking about all the detail that goes into a project like this, and we don't have that time, but just, just a sketch of, of what this project entails. Well, the 800 megahertz project is a six-site, five-tower project. It's a simulcast trunk system, and for people that don't, I was just are not say, techie let's, let's, people let's, let's, like let's, me. <laughs> let's, let's, let's describe it for me now. <laughs> It's, what the system's going to do is give us the ability to have more channels for people to be able to communicate with each other um, better. Um, in our current system, which is very antiquated now, um, we have times when it's difficult to communicate with each other. So this really is going to give the, us that ability to do that. And the project involves not only the the towers and the infrastructure, but also the equipment? Yes, and there's approximately 54 different um, agencies, if you will, that are involved in this, from police to fire to the Sheboygan Transit, DPW, um, and that's for, you know, ambulance. So there's a variety of users in this project. So everybody that, so basically everybody that needs to communicate through 911 calls or, or responding to emergencies, we'll be able to communicate on the same system with the same equipment and... Correct. Okay. Yes. Very good. And I know you don't do a, a, I believe you said $8 million project in one month because it's hard to spend that kind of money in one month, but what is the status of the project right now and, and when do we look for completion of the project? Well, one of the biggest issues in the project was the inventory of the radios. And when you have that many different entities involved in a project, it's always hard to get everybody to, disagree, to agree. And so finally, after a, a lot of gnashing <laughs> of teeth, that inventory has been complete. And, and I have to say that although there were some trying times, I think everybody worked very well together on it. And with the towers, there's five towers. Um, the one on 67, we're going to be leasing space. Um, there's the Comprehensive Health Center on County Trunk V, and that will be erecting a tower. There's another tower to be placed which, on what we call the Vorpal property, which is on the southeast part of the county. 
and then we have Rocky Knoll and we're going to be erecting a tower there and then the main tower is the Taylor Hill Tower and and that quite honestly is not we're not at the end of um, a decision on that because we're doing some studies on the tower whether it's feasible to put the equipment the 800 radio uh, equipment on that tower or whether we need to erect a new tower so until the towers are completed we really can't use the system or because it's based that's the infrastructure for the system Correct. when do we look for a completion of the project total project I am not going to give a specific date because <laughs> I know how about I will a year? be. <laughs> how, how about a year? <laughs> I'll be held to that. Well, we were hoping is sometime in June of 2000, but the testing of the equipment really depends on foliage. June, and of, now, June of 2001. Yes, yes, okay. yes. And so since we don't have the towers up, we really can't do any testing. So, so we're looking at, at, at next year, the middle of the year sometime? Sometime is, next is, year, yeah, we're hopeful. Yeah, okay. As you I realize projects like this you know, keep you busy, there's a lot of decisions to be made, a lot of uh, uh, information to digest, and uh, somebody has to do it, and <laughs> you're the sheriff, so the buck stops there. <laughs> but maybe you could just um, talk about some of the things that you feel are some challenges in the coming years as far as, as the sheriff's department or, or some of the projects that you think might be coming up. Well, the biggest challenge is the 800 megahertz radio project, but also within that project, there's two other projects going on. And one is our mobile data terminals. We're gonna, ha we have them now, but they're old and they're breaking down, so we're going to be going to laptop computers in the squad cars. And then also, we are going to be sharing software and CAD system with the Sheboygan Police Department and other uh, municipalities throughout the county are going to have the opportunity to join in and really what that's going to do is be able to give officers access to information from the Sheboygan Police Department or say from Plymouth PD where they can access a name and they can get all that information from all departments and it's really going to be an asset to all of our officers. So basically we are keeping up with the technology. I mean, a lot of the things we've talked about are, are technology issues. Yes, we're, sir. We're, we're improving our technology and our ability to communicate and, and to function as a department. Yes. You're gonna be starting your second term in, in a little bit, and um, uh, we're, we're taping this program before the election, but, but I, I've been assured that you're gonna win the election. So you're gonna be starting your next term uh, in January, your second term. Uh, are there any, your first term, you, you initiated the community policing. Mm -hmm. Are there any new initiatives or programs that you're looking at uh, in, the, in the second term? You know, because the radio project and the sharing of software with the city, um, you know, I'm just looking to complete that project. I hope it doesn't take my whole next term, to be honest with you. But I don't have any really huge projects. There's some things I would like to look at. Um, as far as corrections, we have the electronic, electronic monitoring bracelet, which, you know, some of our inmates, it's available to some of them. There's new technology out there. Um, it's a GPS system where you can track the person. I'm looking at that, but I'm not willing to take that on right now until we get the radio project resolved. We talked a little bit before about the drug unit, the MAG unit, and um, the higher incidence of, of, of the amount of drugs that you're, that you're finding. Obviously, Sheboygan County has been uh, identified as, as a good place to raise a family and a good place to live. And, and one of the things that gives us that ranking is, is a good uh, sheriff's department, good city police department, is in, in your a viewpoint is Sheboygan County a safe place to live? Is is it a good? Do you agree with that that status? That it's the safest place. In I don't know if it's I, the, I don't, <laughs> we don't have to be the safest, but but it, but but, but are, is it a is it a place where where you feel comfortable with your your uh, teenage kids out in the community in the evening and and you know is, is it a safe community? I think Sheboygan County is just a great place to live. I really do. And I think part of it is the people that make up Sheboygan County. Sheboygan County's 
filled with people with great work ethics. And I think when you have that, that that's reflected everywhere in your community. And I feel very comfortable raising my daughter here. Well, we're almost out of time. Is there anything that we have missed in the Sheriff's Department that you'd still like to have our listeners uh, know about? Well, actually, I'd like to give a little plug to the people that work at the Sheriff's <laughs> Department because even though uh, people will call and say, you're the sheriff, by, you know, you're supposed to do this, I don't go out and serve all the papers or write all the accidents. Um, the people from the car washer to the inspector, they're all very, very important people at the Sheriff's Department, and I don't ever want to lose sight of that, and, and I think some days we forget to appreciate those people. So the next time that one of us gets stopped for speeding or for a, a, a light out or something like that, we should thank that deputy for stopping us and, and, and making us aware of what we did wrong. That's right, because they're looking out for your well-being. I'll, I'll try to remember that. <laughs> well, thank you for being with us well, today, thank Sheriff. You. And um, in our effort to uh, continue to bring county government to our readers, or excuse me, our listeners, um, next month we would like to highlight the highway department. Uh, we're coming upon the winter season. We, uh, you're going to start seeing the snow plows out on the road eventually, I'm sure the salters, um, all the things that, that people like to complain about and, and say, you know, why are you getting all this salt on my car, but yet um, if you don't plow the roads, I'm not happy either. So next uh, month, we'd like to have uh, the Highway Commissioner, Roger Lanning, with us, and we'll try to uh, discuss uh, the different departments of the highway and, and the work they do, not only in the winter, but through the fall and the spring and the summer also. Again, if you have any uh, suggestions for us uh, for this uh, TV show that we put on once a month, uh, you could reach any of us at the Administrative Coordinator's office, and the phone number for that office would be 459-3103. And we are welcome to the flood of phone calls that we're going to get, and we'd be happy to hear from you and all your suggestions for uh, our program. And we'll see you again next month with uh, Highway Commissioner, Commissioner Roger Lanning and the Highway Department. Thank you.